Welcome to Learning English with Captain Vinoy Varagil, Assistant Professor, Department of English, St. Joseph's College, Dev Greek Oracle. In the previous lecture, we studied elision, and we know that elision is dropping of a sound in connected speech. And we know about the very process of elision, and we know that it doesn't affect the meaning of any word or meaning of speech. Today we discuss a new terminology in phonetics and it is known as assimilation. A-S-S-I-M-I-L-A-T-I-O-N. Assimilation. And we have to understand what is assimilation. So, so far as the students of the English language and literature are concerned, there can be a number of questions based on the very concept assimilation. And we have to be familiar with a lot of terms like the progressive assimilation. What is progressive assimilation? What is regressive assimilation? Besides that, we will also discuss some other kind of assimilation called the historic assimilation, negligent assimilation, contextual assimilation, etc. So there are different concepts related to assimilation. Now let's understand what is the very concept assimilation. We notice that the phonetic quality of a sound is influenced by the phonetic environment in which it occurs. So, the phonetic environment refers to the phonemes that constitute a syllable or rather the phonemes that constitute a word or all the syllables that form a word. And the sounds that precede and follow a phoneme have an influence over it, thus affecting its phonetic quality. So, we have uh, oh, a, a number of vocabulary items in English. So, the phonemes in each and every word, although the same phoneme, have different qualities. Say, for example, we have the words pet and pin. We have pet, P-E-T, pet, and we have P-I-N, pin. We have per in the first word pet and per in the second word pin. But when we look at both these phonemes per, the voiceless, bilabial, plosive, per, we understand that the first per is different from the second per because the nearby phoneme in the first one is ye and the nearby phoneme in the second one is e. So based on the sounds next to one phoneme, the, verb, the quality of the phoneme change. And this particular aspect or feature of the influence on of one phoneme over the other is known as assimilation. And as a result of the influence, the sound is changing. And this is what is known as assimilation. And assimilation, once again, I'm just repeating, assimilation refers to the influence exercised by one sound up on one sound up on the articulation of another so that the sounds become more alike now let us just exam uh, analyze two examples we have the word rather we have of course a compound word like news print in fact it is always news the z is the voiced sound news 
print in isolation. When we say these two words as two words, it is news and print. But we have to understand the fact that that uh, voiced z is becoming this z is becoming a voiceless s because the next word that is of course the next word is print and the first phoneme in the next word that is print begins with a voiceless bilabial per sound and because of this particular voiceless sound and this particular sound is also becoming voiceless and this voiced z is replaced by voiceless s and this type of the change of one sound under the influence of another sound is known as assimilation so here in in news print it, it is in fact news news Z, news print and uh, the z sound is replaced by s under the influence of the per sound so we can say that sound a is replaced by sound b under the influence of sound c very easy to understand what is assimilation assimilation refers to the change of a phoneme under the influence of uh, change of one phoneme by another phoneme under the influence of a third phoneme. Sound A is replaced by sound B under the influence of sound C. Here it is very clear news print, news print z is replaced by voiced z is replaced by voiceless s under the influence of voiceless per. So this is what is known as assimilation and we understand the fact that the change is quite often allophonic, allophonic, right? This is allophonic in the sense that the change is because of the phoneme. The change is occurring on a phoneme in a particular phonetic environment. Now we have to understand little more about the assimilation we have two in fact we have five more assimilation and uh, initially i am just introducing two assimilation one is progressive assimilation what is progressive assimilation and after that we will see regressive assimilation so let's understand progressive assimilation the forward spread of a feature the forward spread of a feature that is the features of a phoneme affect the phoneme following it is called progressive assimilation okay so here we have the words one side we have lambs diwali is a festival of lambs it is lambs lambs next one is i need to buy some bags bags z. so we have to understand the fact that it is remember the plural suffix is of course s or es right plural suffix and the plural suffix has of course three pronunciation one is normal s the other is of course z and the other is 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 all right so these are the different phonetic sounds or phonetic uh, uh, versions of the plural suffix the plural suffix s or es has three pronunciations one is s the other is z and the third is is and we understand that here okay we have lambs in lambs we have the voiceless per okay it is because of the voiceless per that the plural suffix is becoming a voiceless s and this is what is known as yeah 
the forward the forward spread of a feature it's going forward the assimilation is here and this is known as progressive assimilation but uh, in, in the second one is also here again we have forward assimilation because this is going forward that now that the the consonant g is voiced the g is voiced and now that it is voiced the plural suffix is also voiced and this is going forward and such kind of a forward spread of this particular sound change is what is known as progressive assimilation if the assimilation is just rather this is of course right a sound that uh, it, it, the, the, the assimilation is going forward okay progressive it is continuing and now if the assimilation is just uh, withdrawing or retreating coming back it is known as regressive assimilation regressive assimilation say for example look at the words keep keep and another word is of course come and we understand that the k these two k k in keep is different from k in come okay come come the k is of course very much we are but we understand that come keep right the k in keep is of course more uh, it is pre velar pre velar because it is not at uh, the normal velar position in the back of uh, the mouth that the sound uh, keep is produced why because it is it is because of the e sound and because of the e sound the k sound is getting some change and this kind of an an assimilation which which is just coming back which is just uh, uh, not forward backward the backward uh, spread of uh, the this is in fact progressive is forward forward spread of uh, the assimilation and the backward spread of the assimilation is known as regressive assimilation okay so with this of course we have clearly understood what is assimilation what is progressive assimilation and what is regressive assimilation now we have to understand three more concepts related to assimilation they are historic assimilation historic assimilation and historic assimilation then negligent assimilation negligent assimilation and contextual assimilation contextual contextual assimilation okay three more we have to discuss we are going to discuss all the three right now Thank you.